Even though you might have seen Jurassic Park, you probably do not know much about how dinosaurs really looked and lived. Paleontologists are also unclear on many fundamental aspects of dinosaur life. The good news is, today, we are bringing you up to speed on the dinosaur world. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at fascinating unsolved dinosaur debates. Did dinosaurs have lips? If you ask the average person to close their eyes and imagine a Tyrannosaurus rex, chances are the image would resemble the terrifying predators shown in Jurassic Park. A paleontologist, however, might envision a vastly different dinosaur. The T-Rex of cinema is fierce, hypermasculine, and great for marketing dinosaur action figures to young boys, but it is probably not scientifically accurate. The T-Rex that truly walked this earth likely had a softer image, and this may be partially attributed to lips. Tyrannosaurus rex, whose name means tyrant king of the lizards, is typically portrayed with long and exposed sets of sharp teeth. However, this depiction is contradicted by research presented in 2016 by paleontologist Robert R. Reyes at a meeting of the Canadian Society of Vertebrate Paleontology. Reyes argues that much of the dinosaur's teeth were covered by lips and gum. The theory comes from the mouths of present-day reptiles. Reyes observed that while crocodiles are lipless, monitor lizards have teeth partially hidden by scaly lips, similar to what is seen in media portrayals of velociraptors. The enamel of teeth, low in water, needs saliva for hydration. Part of this can be accomplished by lips. Since crocodiles spend so much time in a wet environment, lips are not necessary to prevent their teeth from drying out. Because T. rex lived on land, Reese hypothesizes that they, like monitor lizards, need scaly lips to protect their teeth and keep them hydrated. It is likely that gums also played an important role in protecting T. rex teeth. Paleontologists can predict the placement of gums in the mouth of their dinosaur by looking at where the enamel stops in tooth fossils. This means part of a T. rex's teeth would be hidden by gums, causing them to appear much shorter than what we see in popular media. Despite Reese's evidence, the appearance of T. rex lips is still contested among the paleontology community. In 2017, researchers looked at a specimen of Daspletosaurus horneri, a genus of the Tyrannosaurids, and their observations led them to question the validity of Reese's ideas. The researchers were able to match the bone textures of the skull of D. horneri with the probable skin types of the living dinosaur by comparing the skull to present-day species. Similarities in facial nerves and arteries helped the research team reconstruct the Tyrannosaurus, revealing commonalities between skull features of D. horneri and modern crocodiles. Both crocodiles and the Tyrannosaur share a small band of smooth bone across the rows of their teeth, which does not allow for lips. This convinced lead researcher Thomas Carr that, like crocodiles, Tyrannosaurs had flat scales, not fleshy lips, to cover the bones of their jaw and snout. Since the reptiles share bone texture and therefore likely skin types, the evidence is compelling. Additionally, because crocodile scales are highly sensitive, this new research may help us learn more about how Tyrannosaurs hunted, socialized, and sensed their surroundings. Until similar findings are discovered directly in a T-Rex, the lip debate is likely to remain unsolved. Even paleontologists will soon hold outdated images of T-Rex as more evidence is uncovered and we gain a deeper understanding of the life of these fascinating beasts. Is Nanotyrannus valid? Nanotyrannus, which means dwarf tyrant, remains a highly controversial genus of the Tyrannosaurids. It is possible the fourth smallest Tyrannosaurid and one of the last in the existence before the KT extinction. Debates about the validity of Nanotyrannus started with the discovery of the first specimen, a small skull found in 1941 by Charles W. Gilmore. First labelled as Gorgosaurus and eventually put into its own category as Nanotyrannus, paleontologists are still unsure if it has earned its place as an individual genus or if the fossils are actually that of a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. More paleontologists believe that Nanotyrannus specimens are juvenile. Therefore, 
It is hard to know the validity of Nanotyrannus for sure until we discover a juvenile T. rex that can be distinguished from Nanotyrannus specimens or an adult Nanotyrannus that can be distinguished from adult T. rex specimens. While Nanotyrannus anatomy deviates slightly from T. rex due to features such as higher number of teeth, it is hard to tell if this can be attributed to young age or separate genuses. The discovery of Jane, a specimen of juvenile tyrannosaur found in 2001, stirred the pod even more. Examination of the skull led paleontologists to conclude the specimen belonged to the same species of Nanotyrannus, but it also seemed to represent a juvenile T. rex. In 2005, the issue of the Jane specimen and Nanotyrannus validity was brought to a conference held at the Burpee Museum of Natural History. While most saw Jane as further proof that Nanotyrannus was indeed a juvenile T. rex all along, other paleontologists still held out on the validity of a separate genus. Recent Nanotyrannus fossils found in Montana may help settle the debate. After an intense legal battle, the specimen arrived at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Science in 2020. For the first time in almost a decade, scientists have access to the fossils. Hopefully, this enduring controversy may soon reach a resolution. What color were dinosaurs? This is probably a good reason why we do not envision T. rex as hot pink, but there is truly not much known about the color of any dinosaur. Determining the color of dinosaurs is not as easy as it may sound, and right now, all we have is guesswork. Some theorize that dinosaurs were shades of green and gray because it would help them blend into their environment, thus evading predators. Plus, these dull colors would align with what we see in the large warm-blooded animals of the present day, like elephants. On the other hand, other paleontologists hold the opposite hypothesis. They suggest that dinosaur skin was made of rich shades of purple, orange, or other more vibrant colors. Some also believe dinosaurs had spots of varying colors. Paleontologists who advocate for colorful dinosaurs believe their vivid skin would help them recognize each other and attract potential mates. After all, birds, the closest living relative to dinosaurs, can see in color, so it is possible that dinosaurs could too. It is also possible that male dinosaurs were more brightly colored than their female counterparts in order to attract mates, which we also see in modern birds. Although both theories are logical, they are not rooted in concrete evidence. Recently, scientists have been able to use melanosomes found in fossils to make some more advanced guesswork. Melanosomes contain two types of melanin that can indicate different hues. Studying patterns of melanosomes have brought us much closer to confirming the color of many dinosaurs. For example, paleontologists now believe that the Microraptor, a genus of small four-winged dinosaurs, had black feathers. Unfortunately, determining color from melanosomes is not yet an exact science. Color may be affected by other elements, such as a dinosaur's diet. Additionally, the pigments within melanosomes degrade with age. Hopefully, we will discover more clues with time and gain the ability to make more accurate predictions in the future. Once we know more about the color of dinosaurs, we can tell a lot more about their lives, such as their sexual selection process. Looking at color also helps us examine evolutionary links between dinosaurs and modern animals. Clearly, our current fossils and technology just do not give us all the answers when it comes to dinosaurs. Hopefully, one day these divisive debates will be settled, but it may take a time machine for us to truly see dinosaurs as they once were. The Atacama Raptor Sighting Back in 2004, a Spanish family visiting the Atacama Desert of Chile claimed to have seen a strange dog-like kangaroo creature, later dubbed the Atacama Raptor, that chased their vehicle as they made their way back to Arica. The Spanish family described the animal as appearing to stand at a little over six feet tall, sighted as running on its hind legs similar to a bipedal creature, possessing razor-sharp teeth, and seemed to fit the description of a dinosaur-like bird closely resembling a large kangaroo. This has led many to support the idea that perhaps there is a direct descendant of an ancient raptor species that has survived well into the modern day. 
though many researchers are scared to make such assumptions as the sighting and reports have been few and far between, and the natural environment of the Atacama Desert is hardly capable of supporting large natural wildlife. If there are surviving raptor species, the creature would be similar in design to the modern-day ostrich, with its bipedal design and large bird-like body. Unfortunately, for a creature of that size to exist in the region, it would also need to possess a significantly large enough population to continue its numbers without any damage mutations in the species. It is for this reason that it is believed that the Atacama raptor must be an endangered species hidden across Chile in uninhabited regions across the country. Given the fact that the sightings of the creature are few and far between, many believe that perhaps the unknown species is already extinct, if it ever existed in the first place. The River Lizard's Cryptid Known in the cryptozoological circuit as the river lizards, these creatures seem eerily similar in design to their small theropod genus of dinosaurs of which has fossils commonly found near ancient riverbanks and dense jungle regions all around the world. These cryptid river lizards have claimed to have been sighted nearly anywhere where there exist secluded rivers and uninhabited mountainous jungles that see little to no human contact with claims coming from the Amazon jungles, the Rocky Mountains of the United States, secluded regions of Africa, and distant rivers of China to Siberia. According to a number of eyewitnesses, the river lizards seem to possess an extra flap of skin surrounding their neck that can be expanded outward when threatened, similar to how a peacock expands its feathers. A number of cryptozoological researchers have also made a connection between the sightings of the river lizards and another creature known as the Mountain Boomers cryptid of the Rocky Mountains and southwestern Texas. According to descriptions, the Mountain Boomers are another species of surviving dinosaur that resides within the mountains of the United States that are claimed to sleep inside caves or deep burrows and are capable of leaping great distances similar to that of a kangaroo while still possessing a design similar to that of the river lizards. There are many cryptid researchers that believe the two cryptids are one and the same, with sightings, descriptions and locations directly matching one another. But what do you make of these interesting dinosaur discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.